Oh, him? Yeah. I know him. It's going to take a while. It happened years ago. Did you know there are three kind of aces? Those who seek strength, those who live for pride, and those who can read the tide of battle. Those are the three. And him? He was a fighter pilot they called Solo Wing Pixie. This man was his buddy. is the man I seek. It was a cold and snowy day. And what is peace? to take a while. It happened years ago. Did you know there are three kind of aces? Those who seek strength, those who live for pride, and those who can read the tide of battle. Those are the three. And him? He was a true ace. He was a fighter pilot they called Solo Wing Pixie. He was a colleague of the man I seek. Ten years ago, there was a war that engulfed the world, the Belkin War. And in that war was a pilot who trailed across the sky and disappeared from history. He was a lone mercenary who inspired both fear and admiration. He is the man I seek. And so, with the words of Solo Wing, the curtain rises. It was a cold and snowy day. It all started on that snowy day. My first impression was... He had potential. 
The Belkin War is shrouded in mystery. But now, a decade after the peace accords, a portion of the records was finally released. I quickly got a hold of it. Wanting more details, I acquired information from unknown sources. There was a reason for my obsession. The roots of the war lie in the Belkin Federal Law Review that took place in 1988. Belka, suffering from economic strife, permitted its eastern territory to secede, and the Republic of Ustio was born. But Belka's economic troubles did not subside. Meanwhile, taking advantage of the situation, the world superpower Osea continued to flourish. Amidst the economic panic, an extreme right-wing party took power within Belka, aiming to restore strength and stability to the nation. And on March 25th, 1995, with the discovery of natural resources in Ustio, Belka began to invade its neighbors. It was the beginning of the Belkan War. Unprepared, each country fell quickly before the might of the legendary Belkan Air Force. In just a few days, they occupied all territories except for the mountain range. In response, the occupied Ustio government military placed all their hopes on a joint operation between Osea and the foreign mercenary forces. This, of course, can be found in any history book. But I noticed a strange similarity in the materials I gathered. There were several accounts about a mercenary, all followed by the code word, demon. But most of the information was incomplete. Still, I was intrigued. I decided to pursue the history of the Balkan War through this mercenary. I was certain I would find something there. Would it be the hidden truth behind the war, or just another battlefield legend? I wasn't able to meet the mercenary himself. Actually, it's questionable if he ever did exist. But thanks to some old friends in the military, I was able to track down several individuals who knew him. Soloing is one such man. Belkin Priority One Strategic Airspace B7R, aka the Round Table. It was the grand stage where we pilots performed. We were all on an equal footing, fighting under the same conditions. No affiliations or ranks to hinder us. Aces from every nation crisscrossed through those skies in pursuit of air superiority. The only rule of engagement was to survive. On May 13, 1995, Ustio was finally liberated. The tide of war was about to change dramatically. The true nature of the war begins from this point forward. Accounts vary depending on the article and source. Everyone is a hero and a villain, and no one knows who is the victim and who is the aggressor. And what is peace? All questions commonly asked about any war in history. As the battlegrounds move to Belka, he is also thrust into the middle of this war. This is also where my interests shift from the war 
to him. several of our members. Mercenaries like us are disposable to the guys in charge. But in the end, we survived. My pulse raced at the astounding accomplishments of the mercenary known as Demon Lord. I forgot about my job and read everything I had on hand. Around the time Demon Lord received his nickname, South Belka showed signs of weariness regarding the war. Because the region was set up as a defense line to protect the birthplace of Belka in the north, the people's dissatisfaction had reached a climax. The cities declared themselves demilitarized and peacefully surrendered to the Allied forces. Unable to establish a defensive position, the Belkan army kept retreating to the north. The end of the war was fast approaching. I was given an opportunity to interview the former aces of the Belkan Air Force. Back then, they were the masters of the sky and they had also known him. So I crossed the border to follow his trail. I wanted to capture the war and the demon lord from their point of view, to capture the voices of those who were there. Bernard Schmidt, a man with the eyes of an owl, groom team commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 10th Air Division, 8th Tactical Fighter Squadron. Fighting with distinguished service on the battlefield, he earned the title of Ace with his uncanny ability to adapt quickly to the flow of battle. Oh, I had a bad feeling while I was flying towards the round table. Why were they having problems down in two mercenaries? I figured it was just temporary chaos and it'd be over by the time I got there. Pilots of the Belkin Air Force are true professionals, but when I saw the situation, I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought maybe my IFF was malfunctioning. There were still two enemies on the radar. Everyone else in my squadron had the same reaction. This is really happening. Every now and then, guys like that appear on a battlefield. Someone special, you know? I squint in my eyes and confirm the situation. Check the terrain, air currents, his plane, his maneuvers, and his remaining ammo. I figured I could do it. I knew what I was getting into, but he still aren't maneuvering me beyond my expectation. Gelb Team is number two, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 5th Air Division, 23rd Tactical Fighter Squadron, Rainer Altman. He flew the skies of Directus during the capital's liberation. 
and he's still there to this day. I met him above this very sky. I can still hear the sound of the missile alerts from that day. I received an order to fly to Directus on my way back from an intercept mission on the southern defense line. The order itself wasn't unusual. We kept being deployed from one mission to the next without receiving even the basic maintenance. But the situation was the same all around. We were late reaching the operational space. The station squadrons had already retreated and warning bells were going off in the city. And the people were looking up to his plane, high above the sky. It felt like he could see right through me. He was always one step ahead of me. He matched every combat maneuver I made until I used up every trick in the book. Schnee Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 22nd Air Division, 4th Tactical Fighter Squadron, Eric Hillenbrand. He never had great ambitions. All he ever hoped for was to make a living as a regular pilot. Today he works as a flight instructor for civilian pilots. The instant he shot me, I pulled the lever. <laughs> I barely managed to escape from my plane as it burst into flames. After drifting from the blast, I landed below the round table. It was a wide open, barren wasteland. How long would I have to wait for a rescue party? Radio interference within the round table was fierce. The odds of a distress signal actually reaching anyone was low. I was at a loss for what to do. Anyway, I'd really gone out with a bang this time. I took that as a sign it was time for me to retire. But just then, I heard a roaring overhead. It was his plane. I was jealous of his calm flying form. Rather than wait for the rescue team, I began to walk toward the nearest base. I was driven by desire to get back up there and fight him again. Of course, it did take me three days to get there. Every time I flew with him, his skill stood out. He was unstoppable. He would ascertain the situation in an instant and change the tide of battle. He was born for combat. It was no wonder they called him a demon lord. That said, it was hell trying to keep up with him. Before long, everyone had taken notice of him. More and more would show up to watch him go off on sortie. Mercenaries or maintenance crew, it didn't matter. People wanted to burn his image to their memories. Hell, they weren't the only ones. Nobody knew why they were fighting anymore. All I felt at that point was sadness for the world. That's why I... June 6th, 1995. I was still in school at the time, but I'll never forget the images I saw on the news that day. The Belkins set off seven nuclear explosions on their own soil. Maybe their old militaristic leaders couldn't stand the idea of allied forces invading their land. And declared to the world that the land to the north was the holy land of Belka. According to official records, more than 12,000 people died. It was a grand self-sacrifice that engulfed all. The only thing remaining was the desolate landscape. How did the people of Belka feel about what they saw? And what did he think of it when he looked down on it from the sky? June 20th, 1995.
A treaty declaring a cessation of hostilities was signed in Lumen, a city on the border of South Belka and Osia. It was a one-sided treaty that heavily favored Osia. The borders of the affected countries that fluxed greatly over the past years finally settled down at the cost of many human lives. The battlefield shifted to the tables, and the politicians from all countries squabbled with each other over the rights to the underground natural resources, the initial cause of this war. Six months passed without any developments, six months of void. I focused on this time period for the hidden truth laid there. And I learned that my pursuit of him was not a mistake.
So this is the hidden truth about the war. And this is where his trail ends as well. The impact of the seven nuclear detonations on the world's psyche was great. Those who witnessed the carnage went on to organize a global arms reduction. Perhaps they were admonishing themselves. Furthermore, the existence of V2 was concealed. The events that occurred after the war faded from people's memories, and these men were also sealed away from history. Maybe this was one path to achieve peace. And here the curtain falls on this story. However, that does not mean their own stories came to an end. War is something fought on the desk of politicians. As long as they win in the end, that's all that matters. But for us, it's a matter of survival. In order to survive, you need to analyze the situation in an instant. It's the same as living in a city. The rules of this little city apply just as well to that wide open sky. That guy had the same feel about him as this city. I bailed out and landed here. The captain was gone. I've lived a comfortable life since then. And I probably have him to thank for that. They ring the bells here at dusk to honor the liberation of the capital. It signals peace, but to me, they are the sounds of death. When a fighter plane goes down, that's the end. It disintegrates into pieces. Incinerated beyond recognition. It's a scary thought. But it also makes you feel alive. I left the military, but I still fly that sky. But, uh... It's pretty lonely up there all by myself. I'd love to fly with him again someday. Marcela Vasquez. The Espada team's number two, and former member of the Sapin Air Force, 9th Air and Land Division, 11th Tactical Fighter Squadron. She is thought to be a survivor of the coup d'etat squadron. She currently earns a living as a dancer. If the demon lord hadn't appeared, our lives might have been different. For me, it wasn't about flying or ideals. Most of all, it was about him, my flight lead. Our mission was to escort the heavy command cruiser that was to act as transportation for the organization. And the demon lord appeared, as if to block our path. I will never forget his overwhelming power. One by one, my comrades were shot down, and then the mother bird we were supposed to protect. We survived after the fight, we left our organization and returned to the ground together. But he was heavily wounded. He soon passed away, leaving me behind. We were only able to spend a short time together in peace and quiet. But I don't blame anyone. The regret and suffering that remained after that battle were also what he had given me. They're among the precious few things he left behind. Anton Kuchenko, thought to be head director of A World With No Boundaries, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 18th Air Division, 5th Tactical Fighter Squadron. In his glory days, he was a Belkin ace and later became head of their Department of Weapons Development and Technology but the military sent him back out on the front lines as a commander. In March of 1995, he suddenly disappeared along with his platoon and was never accounted for after that. The Belkin Air Force announced that he died in combat. Several months after that, his corpse was found close to the Belkin border. The whole story is still shrouded in mystery.
Larry Funk, also known as Solo Wing Pixie. GOM Team's number two, and member of the Ustio Air Force, 6th Air Division, 66th Air Force Unit. That's right. This man was his buddy, and his enemy. I should have died that day, but I didn't. I dragged my wounded body and reached ground zero of the nuclear detonations. A barren, empty land. I felt an unbearable sadness when I witnessed that landscape. There were still people living there. They were the ones that saved me. It may be true that the world has no need of borders, but would getting rid of them really change anything? The world won't change for the better unless we trust people. Trust is vital in a peaceful world. But that will never happen. I'm still on the battlefield. Right now I'm near a border. I want to see for myself what borders really mean, and what their volition really is. I may not find what I'm looking for, but I still want to try. Anyway, that's what I've come to believe, and I think that's enough. Will he see this video? If you do meet him, give him a message for me. Yo, buddy. Still alive? And thanks, friend. See you again. The Demon Lord of the Round Table. A warrior who soared through the Belkin War, inspiring both fear and admiration. His presence filled the skies for but a few short months before he disappeared. Apart from that, nothing is known about him. I was never able to find out what kind of a person he really was. But whenever they talked about him, they always had a slight smile on their faces. That, perhaps, may be my answer. <laughs>